Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another daily dose of unstable spoilers, and we got some super sweet cards to talk about today, which means let's jump right into it, start talking about the sweet new unstable card, starting off with my favorite card previewed today, Grusilda Monster Masher. This card is so, so amazing. It's a card I want to play as my commander if my playgroup lets me, and I played paper, because I don't think these cards are coming to Magic Online. I would certainly build a deck around Griselda because it is one of the most fun abilities I have ever seen on a Magic card. 5 mana, you get a 4-4 Legendary Creature Zombie Villain. Gives combined, enchanted, and equipped creatures that you control menace. You're probably wondering, what's combined? I've never seen this word before. Well, Griselda answers that question by combining creatures. You can pay 5 and tap it. You put 2 creatures from graveyards onto the battlefield under your control, combined as one creature. So... What do you do with your Zelda? There's tons of sweet possibilities. What I would like to combine includes things like Rules Lawyer with Slippery Boggle, giving you a Rules Lawyer that's probably not going to die anytime soon and just make the game miserable on everyone. Or maybe an Emrakul the Eons Torn with an Emrakul the Promise Send. Let's see, that gives us a 28-28 Flying Trample Protection from Instance Annihilator 6. That sounds like a pretty powerful combined creature, but my favorite by far is Platinum Angel with Abyssal Persecutor. I have no idea what happens. You got a 10-10 Flyer, makes it so you can't lose the game, your opponents can't win the game, but it also makes it so you can't win the game and your opponents can't lose the game. I assume if you can get like a Swift Foot Boots and maybe something to give it indestructible on this combined Platinum Angel Abyssal Persecutor, you just play the game forever. There's no end. There's no end in sight. You just play for infinity until people start dying of old age, but it seems so fun, so I can't wait to play some Griselda. It is one of my favorite cards from the set. Such a cool ability, and I think it is a great inclusion in Unstable. Next on our list, we have one of the weirder cards we've seen in a long time. The countdown is at 1. 5 mana sorcery, and it does something we haven't seen in a magic card in a long time. It makes players play a magic sub game. You play a game of magic within a game of magic. The difference is everyone starts at one life in this sub game. So the game's hopefully going to go a bit quicker. And then who, all the players who lose the sub game or do not win, depending on multiplayer and all that kind of stuff, uh, basically have a furnace of wrath attached to them for the rest of the game. Damage dealt to them is doubled when you go back to the real game of magic. So this is reminiscent of Shaharazard, one of the most infamous magic cards. The difference is countdown is at one, starts the game at one life. Shaharazard actually made you play an entire game of magic, which caused some really weird difficulties and just not something you wanted to do. Make the game go way, way, way too long. But it's really cool to see sub games making a return with Unstable in the countdown is at one. Next we have Jack Knight, which to me feels like a black border card. Like it's got a little bit of a silver border twist because it references contraptions, but it's a 1-1 one, one for two that gets a plus one plus one counter whenever an artifact enters the battlefield, which seems like a pretty legit ability. However, if that artifact is also a contraption, it's going to give Jack Knight lifelink until end of turn. So this is just a solid two drop if you're playing a contraption deck. I would love to see a design like this show up in Black Border though. I could imagine this exact text but with contraption being vehicle or equipment or some other subtype like that and I think that would be a really fun playable not too broken card. So I don't know maybe we'll see something similar to Jack Knight at some point in the future. We also got Mary O'Kill along with Curious Killbot, which kind of go together. So Mary O'Gill, 5 mana plus 1 black or red hybrid mana. You get a 5-5 five, five legendary creature, and it has the ability to switch a Killbot or Mary O'Kill in your hand with 1 on the battlefield. So what this means is actually kind of tricky, and that's where Curious Killbot comes in, because it is a Killbot, it's just a 2-1. So, so let's say you got Mary O'Kill on the battlefield. You block with your Mary O'Kill. You can switch in your Curious Killbot instead so your Mary O'Kill doesn't die. The interesting part of this is the switching basically copies everything. If the creature is tapped or attacking or blocking, enchanted, equipped, targeted, all that stuff remains when the switch takes place. So you get to keep all your enchantments, uh, all your equipment, all that stuff stays on it. So another really cool build around. Legendary, of course, makes it possible for commanders. So another really sweet 
sweet legendary from Unstable. Slang Mantis is super sweet. It is an only an uncommon, but it has a really cool ability. So it has an ability called Just a Second, which I believe is like Split Second. It's a little bit weird the way it's worded. It says, as long as this spell is on the stack, players can't move cards on the battlefield. Not 100% sure if that means they cannot tap their cards. I took it to mean you could not tap your cards. Kind of like Split Second, but super Split Second. But when it enters the battlefield, you actually throw it from at least three feet. And when it enters the battlefield, it fights each creature and opponent controls that it touches as it entered. So this goes back to one of the most famous old card, Chaos Orb, where you would flip it onto the battlefield from a height of at least a foot, blows up the stuff that it touches. Slaying Mantis is basically a uncommon green version of Chaos Orb, which is really fun and really cool. It is such a unique aspect of unsets so that you don't get in real magic cards don't make you throw them around that's just not something that you do with magic cards but in the world of unsets we can get away with stuff like slaying mantis so i'll be interesting to see the official ruling on slaying mantis if players can tap their lands or if it's literally like split second but super split second in the just a second mechanic but regardless if you go to your unstable pre-release expect people to be flinging around slaying mantises trying to fight your stuff we also got Party Crasher, which is a super weird card. 5 minutes, 3 3 with haste. Alright, not that bad, Goblin Berserker. The big deal here is Party Crasher can attack during opponent's combats once each turn. So, if you're playing a four-player commander game, not only does Party Crasher come down with haste and attack on your turn, go to your opponent's turn, you get to attack an opponent. Go to your next opponent's turn, you get to attack an opponent. It just really messes with one of the fundamental rules of magic that you only get to attack on your turn. So, it's literally crashing your opponent's party when they go to attack you. It'll be interesting to see how this actually plays. I have no idea if it'll actually be good. It's certainly cool. I assume if you're able to to attack your opponents that they're also able to block party crasher which leads to some really weird game states where your opponent's going to be thinking well if i attack with everything then i won't have any blockers back for this party crasher that's probably going to attack me so uh, the timing issue and the actual rules of party crasher are a little bit confusing but a super sweet design we also got selfie preservation which is basically the rampant growth of the set but with a twist it's only a rampant growth if you search for a basic land with a tree in the art. If you search for a basic land with a tree in the art, you get to put it directly on the battlefield. Otherwise, it just goes to your hand, kind of like in a tune with ether, a lay of the land. So this makes you care about something that you normally don't care about, the art on your basic lands. So it's really cool, and it'll be interesting to see if when you go to your unstable pre-release, are players going to be digging through the land box to try to find basic lands that have tree art on them to play in their selfie preservation ramp deck. I just love the aspect of this card that makes you care about something that normally is completely secondary to the game of Magic. Otherwise, the last thing I wanted to talk about today was some super sweet sweet tokens we got the full art tokens that'll be coming in the set so in unstable we got two different kinds of tokens we have tokens that are actually attached to cards in the set like we saw yesterday in crow storm in the crow storm token there's also just a bunch of generic tokens and these tokens start off looking like real tokens but if you flip them around you get full art tokens all the way to the border, no text, no power and toughness. These cards are super spicy, and I expect that they will rank alongside the borderless basic lands from Unstable as some of the most in-demand cards from the set. Not just because they look so cool, but Wizards did a really good job of nailing popular creature types. You got angels, you got beasts, you got the elemental tokens from Voice of Resurgence, from Young Pyromancer, Zombies, Sapperlings, Thopters, Spirits. These are some of the most played types as far as tokens tokens go, which means lots of people are going to want these because they look super amazing and just great job wizards nailing it with the tokens. They're also going to be in foil. You can't really see that in the picture, but they are foil as well. So I expect they're just going to look super awesome and probably be pretty expensive, at least by unset standards. Anyway, that's our daily unstable spoilers for today. So what do you think? What do you want to combine with Drusalda? How will you play the countdown is at one? Are you excited to fling some flaying mantises or crash your opponent's party? How about the tokens? Will you go out and buy these tokens to upgrade your tokens in your decks? Will you have these sitting around? They look amazing to me, but I want to know what you think. So anyway, 
that's all for our Daily Unstable spoilers for today. Again, let me know in the comments what you think about this super sweet set. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video! If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.